I just want to follow up a little bit on what Shane said, because I'm also a state licensed public adjuster that transitioned into remediation 10 years ago. Right before that storm comes, document your home, document it. They're going to be coming in and trying to say that that damage was old and it wasn't from the storm. So you definitely want to do it. Your all of our phones are, are time date stamped. So you're going to be able to show that loss right before that storm hits. You can never take enough pictures better to even just do video, but I uh, just, that's really, really the best advice you can get on the front side of before a storm even hits. The other thing with windows is as a remediation company, we're never going out of business because of leaky windows. And if you really look at on an estimate after a storm, the, um, the, this, second largest line item is windows it's roof and then windows pay attention to your windows and if you have a claim right now get an engineer like shane to come in and test them because you may be sitting on a hundred thousand dollars worth of damage that's not in your estimate right now with the insurance company so my name's anthony massimino i'm with remediation 911 we're a family-owned business my wife my son and myself uh, we've been in business for 10 years we are legit storm chasers. We follow storms all over the country. We've been as far west as Texas for the freeze, all the way up to Hurricane Sandy in, um, in New York, New Jersey, um, Carolinas, Louisiana, never going back. Um, uh, Panhandle, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's tough, it's tough. Louisiana still owes us a lot of money. We're uh, legit storm chasers, we're emergency service. We get in, right after this storm, we did 22 churches in three weeks. We dried out and, and, and did demo work and tarped um, 22 churches in three weeks. So we did a, a lot of work. Right now, our, our focus is switched to residential work. But I've been asked to talk a little bit about categories of water to you because uh, not a lot of people understand what hurricane water really is. In the industry of water mitigation, there are categories of water, category one, two, and three. And category one would be a clean water supply line that's underneath your sink that bursts. Um, if you dry it quickly enough, it, it should be fine, and depending on how clean the house is, uh, stay as category one water. But once you get into category two, that could be like a toilet overflow with urine in there or maybe a dishwasher that leaked after it washed or a shower pan. And then there's category three, which is sewage. Hurricane-driven water, according to the IICRC, which is our standard in this industry, and it's not a standard in the, in the nation, it is actually a global standard. If we end up in court, we're referencing to the IICRC S500 for water mitigation. It states that the uh, that hurricane wind-driven water is category three. So what that means is is that it's been polluted. It's been dirt. It's so dirty and picked up so many pathogens and particulates in it that whatever building material it touches needs to be removed. After a storm, a lot of times we'll actually come in and we'll dry out houses just because we don't have the, even the manpower or the ability, a lot of companies, to do it. And we need to mitigate damages, much like one of the gentlemen was talking about. It Contractually, we have to stop the bleeding on properties, whether it's tarping it or drying it out so that we don't have a, a mold bloom in a house. So we want to get in and, and dry things out as quick as possible after a storm. But anything that's been touched by hurricane-driven rainwater is category three. It's equivalent to sewage, and it needs to be removed. There's not a lot of people that are, are understand this or know this. And again, what Shane said, you don't, you don't know what you don't know. And the insurance companies are not going to notify you that you're, you've got material, building material that's been so contaminated that it's harmful to, to humans. So um, that really is, is where we are right now um, in respect to the business that we're doing. Every customer that we're doing right now or, or we're servicing still has a blue tarp or a tarp on their roof right now. That, probably means that they haven't done anything to the interior of the house yet um, because you got to stop the bleeding. So a lot of them still are with wet or at least contaminated material in the house that needs to be removed. So uh, Paul just brought me on a project yesterday and every room in this house has about, I don't know, a football size or two of stains in their, in their room. But we've, we cut 
from two feet. The standard is you cut two feet away in every direction from where the where the last spot of damage was with category three or with mold remediation. We're touching every room. So what doesn't look like a lot of damage still needs a complete pack out to the house. Everything needs to be packed up and moved out of the house just for us to be able to get in there and work in every room. Sometimes we can shift contents around depending on where it is. But if it's in the center of a room or in the center of the house in a family room, property owners have to get out. Uh, to, for us to do that work. So uh, category three water, it's dangerous to humans. Uh, it's hurricane water and that's our service. That's what we do. We are building contractors. We are all also HVAC contractors. We primarily um, hold those licenses just to clean duct work for the HVAC uh, because every protocol that we have that's done by a third party, like someone like Shane or another gentleman, Ken, that's up here on this, usually on this panel, has it in there. We do very, very select few customers on billbacks. Uh, that's tough part of the business. I usually let Paul handle all that work. But that's that's our uh, story for Remediation 911. Thank you guys for uh, listening and, and taking in some of this information. Yes, sir. It's a serve pro guy, by the way. Here we go. Don't you think it's buzzing that the media doesn't educate the public how dangerous Category 3 water how lethal it is to people and their health. Terrific. I, I, I mean, aside from the fact that just claims aren't even getting paid, they're really, they're really risking people's health at issues. And this is a highly, highly populated retirement community. So you're dealing with a ton of elderly people that are here. And you know as well as I do, young infants, elderly people, and immunosuppressed people are the most affected by this. And that's... That's what we're dealing with a lot here is is elderly and it's it's horrific and I I don't it's 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 money I mean I it just it's all about the money I mean uh, and even our favorite darling governor that everybody loves has been doing a great job for this state he changed the laws in a big way and um, and and really affected this but one thing you're going to learn and hopefully the attorneys will uh, on the panel will will tell you is that this is this is an important storm to make sure that you get everything done with your house because the laws have changed so significantly that it's going to be very difficult moving forward with claims to really make yourself whole after them when we go and do these most of the time people do not know what category 3 water is and the reason that i bring that up is Hurricane Ian is the last storm. You guys have two years to file a claim, and that usually gives you enough time to do if you find out you got mold or you have something going on. But the laws have changed. We get a hurricane this year, you have one year to file a claim, and then you have another six months to do a supplement. So if you don't do it in time, you guys are going to be in trouble. So one thing that we have this up here and why I have Anthony up here is we want everybody out here to educate people. Because one of the biggest things I see is, and I brought Anthony to the house before a couple times, where the person's like, oh, we don't have no mold. I'm not cleaning it. Well, your whole house was flooded. So with your whole house being flooded, as Anthony, as everybody knows, with Category 3 from a hurricane, that's Category 3 water. So you could have bacteria, E. coli, mold. You could have all kinds of different things in there. You know, that's a big message that I would get out to your neighbors, your friends, your family, and really talk to them and let them know if they had water staining, they need to get a hold of Anthony or they need to get a hold of a remediation company to come over and take care of that. And that's why we have these partners up here on here on this panel so they can educate and they can take care of it. And I just want to also bring up one last point um, before I hand the mic away here is whenever you have a property that is either sustained water damage, that's hurricane water category three or mold, it is imperative that you get a, a, a environmental report, mold report done. If you don't, you are really risking any coverage there, and they're looking to find reasons not to. An environmental report has to be done by a third party. I can, I, although I am an assessor and I can do reports, we're, our company's not built to do them. We we do the we perform the work, but you need to have that third party come in and test this, and document it, and write up a protocol. And their protocol is my outline of the work that I perform. 
And that really insulates you as a customer and myself as a contractor so that the insurance company is saying, you're, not, you're, you're trying to inflate scope. You're trying to just find work. No, I'm just following the outline of this report through this third party. So it's very, very important with that. Yes, sir. Uh, is, the, is the insurance carrier not agreeing with you? They're disputing the def definition of CAT 3? Or are they just in good, not in good faith, saying we're just not going to take. It's care. a really good question. I mean, they like to they, they like to push it back on cat two, I mean, category three instead of two instead of three, which could call for a different um, form of remediation, maybe just cleaning. But there, there, I I have yet to have a carrier push back on category three with this storm. They're all treating it as category three. I mean, they push back on how much they want to pay and what they're going to do and everything else. But as far as arguing that this is category three, I, we have not had one claim where we've dealt with an insurance carrier where they said that yet. Okay. And then, and, but even in, in, in that, with that knowledge, you're still saying get an expert third party to, to document. 100%. Because as soon as you don't, then they're going to say it. <laughs> they're going to say it at that point. Test, test, test. Photos, photos, photos. How many people know somebody that lost all their soffits and got water in their home? Not, there's not a lot, but just so you guys are aware, and Anthony schooled me on this, is when that water came in the house after the hurricane through your soffits, you have Category 3 water in your home. Or those people have your neighbors, your friends, and now that water's sitting in your insulation – and it's going to grow. Bacteria is going to grow. So, Anthony, tell them what happens and how long that could take and why you want to file a claim and get yourself a remediation company in there. Well, I mean, mold can grow in 24 hours, and you could have a full black colony of mold on something in 72 hours. It's more about just you getting up into your attic and having um, – pathogens that have found their way into your attic and you're going to get your Christmas gear out for Christmas or whatever it is and and you, and you're exposed to that most of the time it's a lot it's a lot easier just to pull all the ceilings down but think about in, in an average home what that means to just get all the ceilings down so we can get the insulation out so but uh it, that's happened to every house and and I would tell you that right now, 80% of the homes, they're not even touching the attic restoration part of this right now, unless they've got a real professional. It, the question was, is what are some of the symptoms that you'll find with people? Everybody's different, and uh, the IICRC sets up something called no threshold limit when you have pathogens or you have mold. Everybody can be... Um, Everybody handles it differently. I might be able to handle a million times a particular mold spore levels and not affect me at all, where Shane could have 1% of what I can handle as far as exposure, and he can get very sick from it. And then there might be another mold that it's the, the coin's completely flipped. He can handle as much of that mold, and that one makes me sick. So there's no threshold limit for it. it it's got to go. That's just the way it goes. They, they, they anticipate that somebody is going to come into that environment that's going to be affected by it, and that's, that's really um, why they set forth that no threshold limit.